Hey guys, another video back on the 80. Today we're doing a heater hosing install kit, a bit of maintenance to the old girl. So recently on a holiday late last year we had a heater hose pop. I bypassed the heater core system, just straight loop on the motor. But today's the day, I'm gonna hook up the heating system again. It's getting a bit cooler in Sydney. We've got a few trips coming up in winter and I want the heater to be working again. And yeah, just bring it back to how, how she should be. So while I'm at it, I'm going to be doing the heater tap as well because that, that was getting a bit worse for wear. I think it was just starting to develop a slight leak. I could see some coolant, some dried up coolant on the bottom of the mechanism there. So that's going to get done as well. So I've got a train tamer, heater hose kit. Good thing about this kit, it comes with all the hoses, clamps. Show you over the engine bay. I'll um, show you the heater hose that I've bypassed. So I just had that bypass running out of the motor, straight back into the motor. It's just a temporary job just to get us by. I couldn't actually source the heater hose kit where we were. We're in the middle of South Australia, down near Cooper Pedy. Um, but yeah, there was a, like an automotive store there. And they had some just generic heater hose. Grab that, two clamps, and we're back on the road. The first step, I mount the heater hose. I'm gonna cut a little small hoses because I've got a little looped copper pipe. And I was hoping to do away with, but I couldn't get a hose to go from here into the heater core, so I'm going to have to retain this, which isn't a big problem. I've just got to have a few more hoses and a few more clamps, but I've just got to cut a couple of hoses up just to join those bits. All right, so I've got my little workstation set up here on the bull bar. Yeah, I'll chop him off from the side, don't tell the missus, but. So I've got the heater hose kit here. Clamps, so I've just got to work out which hoses go where, because I've got two spares because I don't have the rear heater, but I'm going to use those ones for those short little hoses I was talking about going on that copper pipe. So I've just got to work out, you know, which ones I shouldn't cut before I make a big mistake. So I found the two hoses I don't need, these two. I'm not going to be able to get much out of this because of all the bends and that in it. So I think I'll just use this nice straight section here to Cut the bits out that I need to get this copper copper tubing onto the heater tap. Is on, I'm pretty happy with them. Um, let's go look. All right, so I've got the two small hoses on and done up. The worm drive clamps there, and this one in down here. So these ones here were a bit, a bit tricky to get to, especially that back one in there. I had to do a little array of flexies and extensions on my little quarter inch drive there, but managed to get it in, got it tight. So I'm just going to put the plug on that end here. I'm just going to use the you know, constant clamping one of these now. These can be pretty tricky to to get on and off. Um, I'll show you the easiest way. Alright, so when you're battling with these things, you're probably going out to grab your combination pliers like this. But see how the see how they're not in line at all? So they just slip off. You can get it, like that's got it pretty good there. These are good quality Nipex pliers and that. But let me show you something that's just a truckload easier. So you just get your adjustables. Look at that. Easy. I was gonna orientate that a bit better. short hoses all sorted just got to get the hose from the block to the heater tap and then from the other side of the heater core down back into the block let's get that sorted
All right, all done. So now we just got to get coolant back in the in the system. So it's easy as putting the funnel here into the radiator and ensuring that this is the highest level. At the moment, I'm currently just in the driveway here, I'm on a downhill slant, especially with that heater tap being on top of the firewall there. It's actually higher than my coolant level. So I'm just gonna reposition the car, face her uphill, fill this to halfway, heater on hot, let the car get up to operating temp, ensure that all the air bubbles are out, and then we'll pop the cap on and go for a drive. So it's gonna leave it like this, I've got the funnel in there, cooling higher than everything. It's gonna leave it like that until that, no more air is coming out. We'll go for a test drive and should be, should be sweet. All right, just got back from a drive, had the heater on full, water temps stayed where they, where they always normally sit, happy with that. Checked under the bonnet for any leaks and the tightness of the clamps, everything looks to be great. Happy with all that, I'm gonna call it done. So I'll just monitor over the next few days and make sure the little reservoir in the side there doesn't doesn't drop too much and I'll just monitor the clamps and make sure nothing else is leaking. So that's a win for me. Now I know I should have used um, Toyota Red Coolant. I will be doing a full cooling system overhaul within, where are we, we're at 487,000 K, so 500,000 K I'm doing the time belt and everything like that. Doing a full cooling system overhaul, Toyota Red's going into then, so happy days. Catch you the next one, legends. Cheers.